You're listening to nothing important. That's what the wave would need. In the wave movie, the wave itself, like, so all three of you would have to have, like, a love interest that is, like, for some reason, some group of three females as well. That's where we would have to go with that. You can't, you can't do the typical, like, uh, you know, like guy breaks up from the wave for a woman and then they all come together at the end. I, I think you guys would all have to be, be basically one unit and then fall in love with. Are you describing one unit like the Chipmunks movie? Isn't that like the. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was, just, so, I was like, is this, is this chip wrecked? What's going on here? <laughs> Please enjoy the show. This is the Nothing Important Podcast. My name is Brian, and with me today is only Jeff on the third mic. Jeff, how you doing, my friend? It's weird having to be stuck on the third mic, even though there's no Dave. <laughs> but we, he's I'll here. Take it. He's here in spirit, always, always. Right, as always. There's just like an empty chair and a microphone uh, somewhere in a dark room that smells like weed, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it has flowers on it for some reason. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. for like a memorial or what. But <laughs> it's, the, it's the weirdest thing ever. So uh, coming up later in the show, we have our uh, interview with Jeremiah Watkins. Of course, he is the white guy from The Wave on Comedy Central's Roast Battle. Hilarious dude. Dave and I recorded an interview with him a couple weeks ago now. Uh, if, uh, Jeff, you haven't heard it yet. I have not at all. I wasn't there. I, I, think- I wasn't going to be. <laughs> I just flat out refused because I had to work. <laughs> So I think I threw him I think I threw him for a loop. Uh first off, I think he sounded he sounded like he just woke up when we talked to him. And th- the first thing I hit him with right out the gate was asking him if he also hated it when your spoon falls into your soup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that's bullshit, right? That sounds like oh, it's total bullshit. What are you that's supposed to do? You, you do you finger it out of there? I mean, do you right. then you ruin your soup and then you ruin your hand and you need napkins? It's a whole process. You get right, another exactly. spoon and so, dig it out. I mean, ugh, so many choices, so much stress. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think that's what he was exactly thinking that the the conversation would start with, but he went with it and uh, a pretty pretty nice guy. Uh, but today, uh, not bragging, but we hit the big time, Jeff. We hit the big time. Hit the big time. Yeah, we <laughs> are like Peter Gabriel, on... big time. Exactly, <laughs> dancing turkeys and all. No, that was Sledgehammer. Shit. That was okay. Sledgehammer. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, is an amazing video. Absolutely, especially amazing for its video. time. Yeah, man. I, I still watch that to this day. The only thing that pisses me off about it, if you go to YouTube and you try to see the uh, the, the Sledgehammer video, there's one where it says Sledgehammer video in HD, but it, it's not. All it did was add black bars on the sides of it to to expand it to the 16-9 ratio of most TVs well, yeah, so nowadays. You can, yeah, well, of course. How else am I supposed to watch it on my widescreen TV and not have it automatically do that anyway? Right, right. <laughs> so disappointed nonetheless. But anyway, we did an interview with uh, Pam Monson from the world-famous, world-renowned Bastion of Journalism, free press newspapers out of Wilmington, Illinois. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That yeah. is the big time. That's like two steps below uh, the New York Times. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually Dave and I's uh, hometown newspaper. It was uh, actually very nice of them to uh, put us on the front page of the paper and for the various little farm communities there. So we're, we're grateful for that. As, as much shit talking as I'm doing, it, it was super cool. She was super nice. And, um, it's a it's a good article. It's like the front page. And, and, yeah, uh, no, I did read it. Uh, it. It is pretty. It's actually hilariously comprehensive for the short time that we've been doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has a very oddly detailed history of your life written in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I guess I'm just a small town legend. What can I say? Yeah. So I figured it uh, it'd be fun to to go through that with you. Sure. Go okay. Through the article. Get your thoughts. Ready? Okay. Uh, from the Free Press newspapers. Uh, they've outgrown their 20-something rock band, but they've found a way to be creative behind a microphone producing podcasts. 
we've talked about that before. We were we were in a band. Jeff, you were a part of that. You were kind of our our manager and uh, pseudo manager, roadie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it was just as dumb as what we're doing currently. <laughs> mm-hmm. Possibly stupider. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. I'd say it's almost a certainty. <laughs> uh, Wilmington residents will remember Brian and Dave, and to a lesser degree, Jeff. Good shout out, Jeff. Look yeah, woo. Yeah. Wilmo. Yeah. Wilmo, send the love. <laughs> Uh, as the rock group uh, White Trash of Stan, whose Wilmington song is still floating around out there on MySpace, and I thought that was a pretty good zinger. Yeah, th- MySpace, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's still what Wilmington uses instead of Facebook and Twitter. They're still on yeah. MySpace, the whole city. I guess that's I, I guess that's kind of true, but I, I was impressed by that. That was a good little little. It really set the tone for the article. How, Absolutely. Uh, what I love about it is uh, Pam. Seems to have gotten that uh, we don't take ourselves seriously either, and I, I thought that was a pretty good like, uh, like poke, <laughs> pretty good poke in the ribs. Yes, yes. <laughs> they now produced the Nothing Important podcast and the It's All Good Man podcast, and for 24 hours they topped the charts. It was actually 48 hours. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, you know, who's counting, right? Who's counting? But it was actually 48 uh, uh, hours. Obviously, obviously you are, Brian. Mm-hmm. Obviously you are. <laughs> calmer than you are calmer than you are uh brian went south after the band broke up dave went west went to an audio school in arizona did an internship in los angeles and uh produces music at third city sound in joliet that's good you know i hope that brings uh dave some business it's good that they gave a little shout out there to where dave uh, spends most of his time that's awesome yeah and they help us out here uh getting everything set up so we can just be idiots uh, on exactly. for a national international audience. <laughs> when uh, when Brian got back to the area, him and Dave talked about putting the band back together, but that didn't felt fit well with uh, Brian's family life. However, Dave was working out of the studio, had a bunch of equipment he wanted to use, and I pretty much said, "Hey, podcasting is a thing." Even though at that point I had never li- or Brian had never listened to a single podcast in his life, and that's very true. I remember I remember when I brought that up to Dave, I said, uh, "Well, you know, you know." Uh, if you want to use the equipment, podcasting, I guess, is a thing. And Dave's response, <laughs> Dave's response was, is it? <laughs> wow. Like, and I'm like, what? You're like an audio guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I remember when this whole idea came up that mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, yeah. And then I would be able to rattle ones off that I listened to. And you're like, oh, maybe I should listen to those. <laughs> maybe I should try to get some ideas. I was like, oh, right. all right, well, let's go. <laughs> I just knew that it was basically a radio show that you make with friends that really isn't a radio show, Brian said. Well, pretty pretty That's much pretty true. pretty accurate, yeah. Yeah, pretty accurate. Started producing the Nothing Important podcast and naturally wanted to have more listeners. Then AMC announced it would make a spinoff of the outrageous, outrageously popular series Breaking Bad called Better Call Saul. They decided to be the first to make a podcast based on that show to get people to listen to the Nothing Important Podcast. So far, it's worked out pretty well. That's probably one of my better ideas. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> actually, what I what I wanted to get into a bit there, but we didn't for the sake of the interview, what actually happened is uh, I was drive, I was on a road trip with my wife and my children, and Dave and I were talking on the phone because everybody was sleeping, and the original idea was uh, our friend Dave is a huge Chicago Bears fan. Mm-hmm. Huge yeah. Chicago Bear fan. Ridiculously Goes for no reason. Ridiculously, for no reason, like half of his wardrobe is <laughs> various bear Chicago bear jerseys. It's b- like and not not bear, like if you're going to go to a certain type of leather club, bear. Mm-hmm. But other Although, type of bear clothing, he, he could probably fit into that though if he really wanted to. I mean, yeah, I mean it's America; you can do anything you want. Exactly, right? dream big. <laughs> anything, you, anything you put your mind to. <laughs> dream big. <laughs> so I was like, well. I don't really give a shit about sports, but I love harassing you about your like of sports. So the original idea for a show was the Chicago Bears podcast, where the whole time Dave would try to do a serious sports show, and I, and I would just uh, I would just like be a smartass the entire time and make fun of him the entire time and try to knock him off his game. I think but, that for as an idea that works out great for the listener, but mm-hmm. eventually it would Dave would just end up being so pissed off he would just quit. <laughs> So I, I like it. It just needs refined. So podcast right, right. three. It needs, yeah, it needs, it needs some work. It needs some work. But uh, but Dave is actually the one who came up with the um, 
the idea to call it is Saul Goodman. So that that was a great idea by Dave because my original idea was uh, better talk Saul, but when I went to put the website in, somebody had already grabbed that website. Dave said it's all good, man, and that's what we went with. And I Did got to say that was a- it's all good, or it's all good, man, as like saying, well, you know, the other that site was taken, but it's all good, man. We'll figure something else out. Or no, did he, he was, actually say, it's all good, man? No, he said, it's all good, man. Like, he was like, like right off the bat when I brought the idea to him to do a Better Call Saul podcast, he was like, nope, this is what we're calling it. And I said, no, I have an idea. He's like, he's like, dude, I like mine better, which is, which is, uh, <laughs> which, which is uncharacteristically aggressive of Dave. Yes. But, um, hey, I like your idea, but I don't. It sucks. We're doing my thing because <laughs> I said so. Right. Exactly. So, uh, it turned out to be a good name, though. It rolls off the tongue, and it definitely separates us from uh, the million other Better Call Saul podcasts that have a name like Better Talk Saul or some sort of variation of something, something Saul. Right, you know, or, like or talk ours. something, talking Saul, like the TV yeah, show. Yeah. Exactly. Things, yeah. Exactly. That gave us a, uh, a competitive advantage because there's a ton of Better Call Saul podcasts out there outside of the official AMC one. And we're probably the only people who can post a podcast as soon as the show ends. Everybody else has 24 to 48 hours behind. I don't know if that's going to be true now because uh, iTunes kind of changed it up to now we can refresh the – it used to be you submit you submit the podcast link and then iTunes would just refresh after 24 to 48 hours sporadically. But they've actually given us a tool now where I can hit the refresh button immediately. But people still have to record their show. So if we get our press credentials and we get our uh, advanced uh, screening this year, we'll at least be a couple hours ahead of everybody, which is still a pretty big deal. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, we kind of, I'm, I'm skipping some of the paragraphs here just for sake of time, but uh, we kind of passively did it until it was downloaded so many times that the original server crashed. And that's very true when uh, – when we found out that our websites and none of that stuff was working because it was uh, too many people were downloading it, I actually told the people they were full of shit and yelled at them for <laughs> wasting my money. <laughs> I was like, that's a bull. I even said, I said, that's a bullshit excuse. <laughs> I'm like, I'm paying you money and your service isn't working. Don't tell me that so many people are listening to my stupid bullshit that we're overloading the yes. server. That's- what you're saying is impossible. Right. And then uh, somebody let me know that we were number 59 on iTunes. And I was like, oh, shit, that's probably what's happening. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so so I had to apologize and then pay them even more money for a higher package to accommodate (laughs) the level of download. So I guess they won that one. (laughs) This time. (laughs) This This time. time. At one point, overall, for all of iTunes, we were number 59. I remember telling my wife, look at that. I'm more popular than Rachel Maddow. Take that, Joel Osteen. And uh, mm-hmm. we haven't been quite that high since, but that's, that's very true. That was like my defining moment in my life is when um, Nancy Grace was less popular than I am, which she sucks, so you would think she'd always be less popular than I am, but uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, we Look at, uh, never mind. They parlayed a tweet to Ray Seahorn, who placed a female lead in Better Call Saul into an interview and have used past guests to support their credibility with potential new guests. Very true. And we've Mm -hmm. talked about that before. We have Ray Seahorn. uh, And, you know, because of Better Call Saul, she's become increasingly busier and uh, harder to get a hold of. But uh, I suspect that if I pushed it a little bit, and I'm going to start here and – like a week or so, I bet we could get her back. Out. We we owe a lot of what we do to Ray Seahorn. It was uh, very cool for her to be the first to. Uh, yeah, and you just look at all the guests that have come on after that, you know, and you finally cracked the top three. Right, <laughs> finally, right. exactly. Yeah, Michael McKean, uh, super awesome. He's the most recent interview that we have up, and uh, I didn't tell you or Dave this, but I was like this close, this close to getting Bob Odenkirk. Oh my god, this close, this close. Talking, but talking about that gives me a semi. Right, he, but he's he's a busy man. Oh yeah, he is, and and uh, it, it's going to happen. I I will will it to happen one day. Uh, when you see our guest list, they're way more impressive than our actual download numbers. Dave said, <laughs> <laughs> "That's pretty true." Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. Their uh, recent guests include Mike Rowe, Colt Cabana, Dan the Beast Severn, 
And uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. I wonder what ever happened to that guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. He kind of just faded away. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Because you wouldn't think so. He, he seemed kind of like a loud, outgoing guy. He, yeah. And, uh, quite boisterous and talkative mm-hmm. about himself. Uh, yeah. Haven't, but yeah. I haven't heard anything from just him. Faded into the wind. Yeah. I wonder what he's up to. I'm going to have to send him. An, I'm going to have to send him a tweet and see if he. Yeah. See if he wants to come back on and check in. Godspeed through Texas. Yes, sir. About 75% of podcasts get 200 or fewer listens a month. The really successful ones, about 5% get more than 50,000 listens an episode. Those are typically people who are already famous and make money at podcasting, like uh, Joe Rogan, Adam Carolla, um, yeah. uh, Chris Hardwick. Uh, you big guys. Brian, Brian and Dave fall in between. More successful than the majority, but not yet famous. That's true. One day, right? <laughs> Always a bridesmaid. Never, never a bride. Yep. I'd rather just keep trying to make the best podcast I can, talk to interesting people, and maybe open up some fun opportunities for uh, Dave and I that we would never get to do otherwise. Uh, that's very true because I, I understand. Uh, here's the funny thing. When anybody gets, starts getting some sort of notoriety or success on their podcast, you'll see on all the podcast forums like Reddit and the Facebook podcaster group, nice people, but the first thing they say is like, how can I make money off this? Motherfucker, you ain't making any money off this yeah. <laughs> because you have no notoriety, you have no name recognition, and the discovery portion of it, how you actually find podcasts is so fucking specific as shitty, it's going to be very hard for anybody to rise through the ranks and actually make money. Well, yeah, and if you go ever go to search through like a genre of podcast or something like that, obviously mm-hmm. the top ones are going to show up there, but if you're going to select something, it takes time investment to be able to listen to it to see if you like it. It's not like looking at a picture or reading mm-hmm. a snippet. You know, it, you actually have to sit there for an hour, 30 minutes, whatever it is, and figure out if it's worth your time or not. Exactly. I, we, me and Dave did uh, did an interview last year for um, some woman over in London. I forget who it is. But uh, she asked me if uh, this was the golden age of podcasting, and I laughed. I said, it's not even the stone age of podcasting because nobody could fucking... <laughs> Nobody can fucking find you, right? Like for a yeah. radio, radio shows, there's more people that are listening to an infomercial right now on some weird AM radio station than will ever find us out of the course of a week because as you're driving your car, you can scroll through radio stations, hear something that at least uh, can uh, cut the silence, and you'll leave it on the radio. But like podcasts, like for us, for example, unless we have like a celebrity guest, like uh, – spring break our spring break where we talked about how and you were involved in that where how we kind of faked our way through being famous on spring break the title of that episode is fake it till you make it and unless somebody goes to itunes specifically into podcasts and type in fake it till you make it exactly how i um how i spelled it and exactly how i punctuated it there's no way in hell that episode is coming up (laughs) <laughs> right? right exactly so uh, right so it's just a complete pain in the ass but i digress do have a good quote here that's kind of along the same line brian says i'm pretty sure no one will ever give me fifteen thousand dollars to hawk squatty potty <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's don't very hey, don't give up on your dreams though don't give up on your dreams <laughs> that's right one day mm-hmm. uh if you were to ask my dad He'd be completely unimpressed with this. <laughs> my dad was super unimpressed with my band, and I don't think he's any more impressed with this. And that, that is that's 100% 100, true. That's 150% true. Every <laughs> time you bring up something like the band or this, you get nothing but an eye roll from, mm-hmm. from your dad. Now, Dave had to one-up me right after that, and he said, my parents are super impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yesterday I get a call from Dave and, uh, he was much more poetic how he, he wrote a poem about this to let me know this is what happened. But the gist of it is, is he actually ran into my dad at the gas station. Okay. Who, who is buying a, a free press newspaper because this is on the front page. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he was. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess my dad, my dad was like. Uh, it's not that I'm not impressed. I just don't appreciate all that fancy language that you guys use. Cause my dad doesn't, my dad doesn't like cussing at all. No, fuck. No, he doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when we were, when we were little or not little, but when we were teenagers, I would ask my brother like, Hey, is dad home? And he'd just be like, hold on a second. I'll check. Fuck. 
And then he would just wait to hear my dad yell back across the house, not to yell customers. <laughs> so you, what you're saying, though, is Dave met your dad at a gas station unannounced, on, you know, on, on accident, mm-hmm. and caught your dad buying the newspaper for the article as mm-hmm. though he was buying pornography. He was just, like, weirded out and embarrassed. <laughs> right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly, but he he did say he he did say he was impressed. So I guess, okay, uh, well, yeah. If I, if I if I had a if I had daddy issues, that would have brought some nice closure. But but I don't. So yeah, I think well, it's funny. if you had a nickel for every time your dad said he's impressed with you, you'd have two and a half cents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff from Bloomington was the unofficial manager of White Trash to Stand and is the third mic on the podcast because he makes the other two laugh. That's very true. Yeah. I, one, thing I, one thing I do like is uh, Mike is spelled M-I-K-E. I saw that, and it makes me angry. <laughs> it makes me angry because it confuses me when I'm reading mm-hmm. as though right. my name is also Mike, and your <laughs> name is Mike, and Brian's name is Mike. Or uh, Sorry, Dave's name is Mike. Look, there's too many mics. It's even confusing me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff bridges the gap between the jokes that I make and Brian doesn't get, and vice versa, Dave said. The show is really about trying to make each other laugh. They're talking to people, but they're really talking to each other. And uh, we like to throw our guests in the middle of our conversations, which is pretty true. We- and sometimes mm-hmm. it's awkward, hilariously yeah. awkward, when we are talking <laughs> just to ourselves and there's just some guy that, is taking time out of his day to participate and we're making him or her just <laughs> right. talk about whatever <laughs> nonsense that we were talking about beforehand. Yeah. This is the most important part of the article. You ready? Ready. Uh, they're hoping to have a float in the catfish days parade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, for those of you who don't know uh, the town that Dave and I are from uh, well, when we were going through high school, it was like 3,000 people. Since, it's ballooned to a whopping 5,300 people. What? And every year, <laughs> every year they, have a, uh, they have a festival called Catfish Days where they have like parades and mud volleyball tournaments. And it's, it's actually huge. All the little farming communities from all over come to Catfish Days Festival, and they have a parade – and uh, I really want to get a float on the parade. My dad owns two John Deere tractors <laughs> and a flatbed trailer. Yeah. We are going to make my dad, who is unimpressed with my podcast, <laughs> tow us on the flatbed trailer with his John Deere tractor as we're podcasting through the parade route. That sounds amazing. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be. Brian, Brian wants to make this happen for the sheer ridiculousness of making it happen. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, please make sure that you're uh, subscribed to our Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Snapchat, all that good stuff. Because when I find out when and where the Catfish Day Parade is happening, anybody within an hour, your attendance is mandatory and you have to come to this small town and uh, watch us on a float in the Catfish Day Parade. I National, oh, be- damn it, that's not right. Sorry, I'm looking it up right now. Catfish Days, July 20th through 23rd. This 2017. Year? Yes, 2017. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. It's going to be Mark awesome. Mark those calendars. I Actually, I'm going to put it in my calendar right now, just because. Yep. July 20th uh, through 23rd. Mm-hmm. You can find both podcasts on iTunes. So overall, pretty pretty good article. Yeah, like I said, um, oddly specific with some histories. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but I, yeah, ni- a nice general overview of what's been happening over the past couple of years. Yeah, I mean that was that was pretty abridged. <laughs> I, I abridged it. You know, I, I left some spots out just because uh, for sake of time. But I thought not a bad article. It was very nice. Uh, here's the weird thing about it: when she called, she left me a Google Voice message because on our website apparently under our contact form i don't have our email but i have our google voice phone number that i forgot we set up like two and a half years ago (laughs) i didn't know we had a google voice phone number yeah and if somebody calls the google voice phone number and you leave a message it'll transcribe that into text and um 
and then it'll send you an email with what they said. And apparently somebody anonymously said, hey, these two goofballs from Wilmington have a couple like relatively successful podcasts. I think that'd be a great story. And I'm like, who, who, who the hell would do that? But uh, <laughs> whoever you are out there, if you're listening, thank you. That was very nice of you. Yeah. And uh, thanks to uh, Pam Momsen and uh, the Free Press newspapers for uh, putting us on the front page. Very nice of them. Yeah. I'm, Absolutely. I'm sure they're not struggling for news in the Wilmington area. So, <laughs> my favorite thing is uh, if if you're not from a town that small, let me just paint a picture for you. Uh, there is two stoplights now. Three. There used to be only oh. two, but now there is there is three stoplights in the town. Uh, there is a McDonald's and a Burger King, both next to cornfields, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it's not uncommon for folks in the winter to drive tractors, horses, and snowmobiles to school. <laughs> it's like, so not, not common. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, you know, and my parents have lived there their entire life, right? Like grew up, knew each other for, since first grade, were high school sweethearts, been married for 50 years, still together, live in the house that my mom grew up in. Um, so being in the newspaper is a big deal. Uh, what I love about reading small town newspapers like that is uh looking in the police blotter yes and yes. seeing everybody i went to high school with <laughs> that's my favorite all the time it doesn't matter especially college town down here bloomington mm-hmm. normal uh mm-hmm. the police blotter is largely hilarious outside <laughs> of the the real crimes that happen mm-hmm. then picking up one of the student newspapers and looking at their attempt at a police blotter is mm-hmm. a thousand times more hilarious too. <laughs> Not only do they pick and choose what they do, but they're also sometimes very specific about how a nude person climbed up the wall of an apartment building because he locked his keys inside of his apartment <laughs> and had to try and get in through the balcony. Oh. Stuff like that. Well, you know, uh, who, who's to say? Uh, who hasn't gotten <sighs> naked and climbed up the side of an apartment building because they forgot their keys? If I had a nickel. I'd have seven and a half cents. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Uh, everybody out there, please uh, stick around for uh, Dave and I's chat with uh, Jeremiah Watkins, the white guy from The Wave on Comedy Central's Roast Battle. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining me today on my lunch break. I had soup yeah, again. It was quite soup. nice. Did you, did you drop the spoon? No. No. See, this is what I learned. Uh, <laughs> I made it a point this time to put the so- spoon back into my lunchbox as I carry that way it's all safe in my lunchbox as I carry the soup very nice all right Smart you're thing. learning yeah it's exactly. learning <laughs> all, right, all right yeah not a problem all right. good break stick in the around. day yes sir stick around for our chat with Jeremiah Watkins you're listening to nothing important I downloaded some sort of thing to make it look like Windows uh, not lame, but it's totally looking like Windows lame, so I don't know what's going on. All right. Today, a little bit later, we're going to be calling uh, Jeremiah Watkins. You might know him as the white guy from The Wave. And Dave, you're not really all familiar with what The Wave is, are you? No, I'm a I'm a cord cutter that doesn't have a lot of other options, so I don't get a lot <laughs> the, of TV. <laughs> gotcha. The Wave is... Uh, they're on the roast battle, and uh, in between jokes, they perform like these silly little skits, I guess, either to mock uh, the person who's been roasted or the person who does the roasting. Like, uh, it's, it's a lot of times it's pantomime, and sometimes they add sound effects, but uh, either love them or hate them. So, I kind of wanted to get Jeremiah's views on that. Uh, I was running a little late today to our recording. I'm typically usually the person that's on time and I get on your and uh, sometimes Jeff asks about being late, but I was actually the late guy today. Yeah, I was I was sitting here uh, waiting patiently. And you know why I was late, Dave? This is the worst thing ever. This is my new worst thing ever. One of my employees made gumbo and I was all excited because I love soups and everything that is soups. It is Mardi Gras I season. Heated it. it is Mardi Gras season. I heated it up in the microwave. I was walking to the office where I'm recording this very podcast, and the entire spoon fell into the soup. 
Oh. Which is like the worst thing ever because all you want to do is sit down and start chowing down, right? right but you right. can't because now you got to dig out your spoon and you got to clean your spoon so your hands aren't all sticky and gross. And then on top of that, why I, I was. You got a stain on your shirt because that's how I clean my spoons. You, oh, yeah. And, and then as I was doing all that, I was trying to set up the equipment and uh, my headphones, part of them f- also fell into the soup. So now I have gumbo in my ear all over my hands and I haven't got to eat yet. And that's why I am late calling you, my friend. <laughs> Sounds like quite a little uh, adventure. You know what? See, nothing can ever happen to me that simple, right? Like in all honesty, in our lifetimes, uh, we've known each other a long time now. When have I ever been late for anything? It's a very, very rare occasion. Right, I can't and when even I think am of late one pers- off the top of my head, other than like a car breaking down or something like mm-hmm. that, or some family right. emergency, which I don't even know many family emergencies you've had. Like, yeah, it's right, it, right. So th- that's exactly my point. Has it ever been just because, like, oh, uh, traffic was bad, or I just left late? No, it's always some ridiculous ass circumstance, <laughs> like <laughs> like my my spoon and my earphone fell into my soup. So my thing is that okay. that stuff happens to me all the time, but I don't allow time for those things to happen. See, a lot of people that, allow- are, that are, are punctual allow time for the random spoon droppages and things like that to happen. Whereas me is like, I'm always waiting to the last second. So if I stub my toe, you know, just waiting for the pain to go away, it makes me late. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's such a weird mentality to me because I, I, I've told you this before too. I don't understand the mentality of like being, they, like they, waiting to the last moment. Like my they, wife, they she say, doesn't wait to the last moment. I'm sorry. They, they say it's a trait of high IQ people um, because it's a way to justify it, I'm sure, that you're trying to like squeeze everything <laughs> into your day. Like you want to get everything done. You don't leave time, extra time because you want to be productive in that time. As a person with a high IQ, that's bullshit. I'm just kind of selfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I appreciate the candor, my friend, because I always wonder about, like, my wife. My wife, uh, she doesn't wait to the last minute, but she tries to time everything perfectly, right? Like, if we got to drive an hour away, my wife will be like, well, if we leave an hour and 15 minutes, that gives us time to pack up the car, get the kids in, get out of the city, drive the hour, and we'll be there by time X. Right. And I'm always like, well, how about we just take whatever fucking time we're supposed to be there and uh, whatever time it would take us to leave to be there on time, and then let's just tack on double the fucking time just in case we get a flat tire, <laughs> and then nobody's late and there's no rush. Because, I mean, there's been times where I'm driving with my wife, and it's like literally down to the last second we have to be at a doctor's appointment, and then I end up like screeching up to the door and kicking her out of the car while she runs in to check in. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like, why don't why don't we just plan for double – double the time so i feel like you're like one extremity to the other and yes. my wife is perfectly situated right in the middle there you go absolutely all right so um next up we have jeremiah watkins again he's from the wave on comedy center where a lot of people know him for he's a stand-up comic been doing it forever uh we're gonna give him a call and uh we're gonna chat for a few minutes and then we'll be right back <laughs> Are you there? Hello. Dave, on the uh, Some Important Hotline, Jeremiah Watkins. Jeremiah, thank you for coming on the show. Hello, Jeremiah. Yo, what up, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, excited to talk to you. First off, I got to ask you, has your spoon ever fell into your soup? <laughs> yeah, man. All is the that, time. Is it's that like the worst thing just, in the world? Or what? Oh man, it's just such a pressing issue on my mind all the time. Like I, I'm such a big soup eater. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a big first world problem, you know. Like uh, it happens at least once a week. That's what I'm saying. See, Dave, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not the only one afflicted by this horrible, horrible ailment that is the spoon falling completely in the soup. Look, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm, as a starving I'm artist, I'm glad you brought this up. It's, I'm glad you brought this up, guys, because, you know, my spoon is usually smaller than the large bowl, and I try mm-hmm. to hang it on the edge of the bowl, and then it just goes completely in, and, you know, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. That's, Dude, that's see, a precarious exactly. placement see? right there. So it's, it's, sometimes <laughs> the fun is in the balancing act. 
and then you just test right. yourself and get up and leave for a second. Whoa, this guy <laughs> likes to live on the edge. Yeah, that's crazy. The bowl. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jeremiah, I'm glad that you you feel my pain and you're just as afflicted by this ailment as I am. Uh, so I want to talk to you. Uh, you are the white guy in the wave. I am. Yes. Now, Dave. Uh, Dave doesn't know what the wave is, uh, but I do, and I could best describe it as in, in, on the roast battle on Comedy Central's roast battle. And I know it goes goes. Uh, you know, the history of it is before uh, Comedy Central roast battle, and we could talk about that in a second. You, you, uh, you guys pantomime pretty much little skits in between the the jokes in between the roast jokes yeah whenever a joke is uh a banger or a heater or just like an amazing joke uh it gets us to come out and we like do little vignettes or sketches or act outs right after the jokes kind of like to heighten the joke or to kind of be the exclamation point on the joke as the squad brothers would say and yeah that's what we do for the roast battles now you're with uh, Jamar Neighbors and uh, Willie Hunter. Um, how did you meet those two gentlemen? I met them through the stand-up scene uh, years ago, probably six or seven years ago, and we just became friends over time, became good buddies, and it just uh, it just worked out later on that uh, that we started doing this together because we all known each other for years and we're we're, we're really good friends, so. We have a lot of like trust built up with each other and rapport, so it's it's uh, it's easy to it's super easy to work with those guys. Now, how did how did that come to be? Did you three randomly just decide to heckle somebody by by doing an impromptu sketch, or how does how does one form uh, such a unique like uh, I guess fixture of the roast battles? How do, how does the wave form? So the original name of the uh, the. Uh, the way was the all N word wave. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then we were the all Negro wave. They're trying to soften it. Um, mm-hmm. and right. then comedy central was like, you guys are going to be called the wave. And we're like, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but how it started was it was literally a group of black guys that, were, that would hang out in the corner in the belly room. And whenever a joke would hit, it would be like, whoa, like, and so that's where like the wave came from. Ah, I got you. Okay. And then like, it became like, kind of like this parody on Def Jam where when a joke would hit, like, you know, they go crazy. So like, ah, oh, that was crazy. Like, like little <laughs> things like that. And so, and then, you know, they start standing up, going on stage and stuff. And then, uh, you know, they asked me to fill in uh, a little, a little bit towards the the beginning when the the show started. Like after a few months in, I was like, "Yeah, I'd love to." And then they're like, "You got to do it every single time." And that's whenever we would be running up on stage and kind of be like, uh, you know, pantomiming like little act outs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the longer we were together, it became just the three of us. And that's whenever like props got involved and uh, <laughs> like a little bit bigger productions <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah. Do you guys practice uh, practice uh, the things you do? We the only time we we do like a dress rehearsal in the stores that we're shopping in. So every store owner really hates us whenever we're shopping <laughs> because we're super loud and we're picking up things. We're like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, and how about if you do this funny face <laughs> and you jump through my arms and I hold you up and it's like, yeah. It's, so we do like a dry run in the store, uh, but outside of that, that's that's about all the, the rehearsing that we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, um, I guess in a way, you're kind of like cheerleaders, right? Like every every sport needs a cheerleader, and uh, you know the roast battles are pretty combative. So I guess I guess it makes sense that you know you need a little side sideline entertainment. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess <laughs> if you want to call it cheerleaders, <laughs> that's one way to put it. I. <laughs> I feel like that's, uh, that's the that's the nicest way of, of <laughs> subduing what we're doing, but I'll take it. <laughs> has any has any of the uh, the comics that were on stage uh, while you went up and did your guys' thing? Has any of the comics on stage been aggravated and attacked you, or told you to knock it the fuck off? Uh, the oh, <laughs> the only time I can really think of somebody getting like like mad at us was 
Jamar tried to feed Ralphie May on stage for the first <laughs> season. And he's like, get that cookie out of my face. Uh, but that's really the only the only time I can I can remember somebody getting kind of upset about us. For the most part, the battlers love us because it gives them time to kind of think of their next joke. It's almost like they can relax for a second. And, mm-hmm. and and take a second to 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 think about what they're going to say next. So, for the most part, all the battlers really like what we do. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, weird fan reaction to it too. Some people, you know, hope you're sitting down because I'm sure you don't know this yet. But like, you know, a lot of people are vehemently against you guys, and then Wait, other people absolutely. What? Li- I know, I know. Comedy That's... Central hasn't said anything to us about this yet. That's crazy. <laughs> You better give your agent a call, man, because I'm going to say there's probably at least two or three tweets out there that says that the wave is bullshit. I personally don't believe it, but there there are people out there who uh, oh yeah, two or three don't tweets. Enjoy your that's antics. like two thousand people, right? Right, right. <laughs> <That's> how it works. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's it's funny. I feel like the first season it was truly like fifty fifty split, like love hate, mm-hmm. and the second season. I feel like it's a little bit better where it's like more of like a 40% hate and 60% love. So I think that it's getting a little bit better, but it's still a lot of people <laughs> really do not get, or they really just hate what we're doing. So that's, that's kind of See, the I, philosophy behind entertainment. A lot of times though, right? You want half the people to love you, half the people to hate you. Cause either way, they're going to tune in to see what's going on. Right. Right. I think it's one of those things that just kind of becomes more endearing because w- w- when you watch it for the first time, I don't think anybody expected like uh, two black dudes and a white guy to run on stage and like um, do some sort of weird skit with with sound effects. Why two guys are trying, or and sometimes women are are trying to insult each other. You know what I mean? So it's like what the it, like what the fuck are they doing there? And then I think over time it's become such a fixture and into the second season. Oh well, now now you're part of it. Uh, because the expectation is is that you're there, right? Right. Yeah. Hopefully, we get to do more, and hopefully, it'll be <laughs> easier and easier for people to <laughs> get behind. <laughs> I think there should be a wave the movie. That's it. Hey, that's man, an angle. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that would entail, but uh, if anybody's out there, uh, I'll help. I'll help you guys. Uh, Secure funding for a wave the movie. I I got like uh, thirty bucks I could throw in on it. I'm sure, I love it. I'm sure yeah, it would be it. some sort of gritty reboot or origin story. Right, <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, super but. gritty. That's key. That is key. <laughs> of course, you got to have like a love interest in there. Um, who who would the wave? That's what the wave would need in the wave movie. The wave itself, like, so all three of you would have to have like a love interest that is like for some reason some group of three females as well that's where we would have to go with that mm. you, can't, you can't do the typical like uh you know like guy breaks up from the wave for a woman and then they all come together at the end i i think you guys would all have to be, be basically one unit and then fall in love with are you describing one unit like the chipmunks movie isn't that like the- yeah, <laughs> i was just thinking that i was, just, so, I was like is this is this chip wrecked? what's going on here so Brittany. So Brittany, Eleanor, and Jeanette, right? Like you guys are on a cruise ship. Wow. David Cross. Yeah, that's right. I knew the name of the Chibets off the top of my head. You're jealous. <laughs> oh, thank you. I am a rock hard right now. <laughs> Don't say sexy things you can't take back, Jeremiah. Don't say sexy things you can't take back. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Jeremiah, but beyond the wave, you've you've been doing comedy for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I've been doing Stand up in LA over seven years, and I started doing improv in Kansas City over ten years ago. So I've been been in the mix for a little bit. What and is, I'm sorry, what, what is the improv scene in Kansas City like? Or is that why you left? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> I, I really was just taking like in high school and college. I was taking like some improv classes, and uh, I really enjoyed that, and that kind of motivated me to to expand outside of Kansas City, but. Really, there there's not a ton of opportunities for the comedy scene. There's a couple comedy clubs as far as stand up goes, but I didn't really get into that scene there. And then the only improv uh, that you can get into is comedy sports, which is like short form improv. Which uh, I, you know, it's it's his own thing. I prefer 
uh, longer form where it's like more scenes and stuff. Short form is like very like games and like uh, like kind of like party improv games and that kind of thing. Huh. But yeah, there's not much of a scene in Kansas City, so yeah, that's why I came out to California. I was like, uh, I gotta get out, <laughs> get out here. <laughs> that's a good move. Awesome, so far, man. Right? Uh, go, one, one more time. Oh, I say that was a good move so far because you're getting some uh, success out in LA. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. There's been uh, yeah, a lot of ups and downs, but yeah, lately it's uh, it's it's been uh, it's been great. I'm um, yeah, super grateful for everything that's been gone lately. That's awesome, uh, Jeremiah. Thank you so much for coming on. Nothing important. It's it's been an honor having you. And before I let you go, I have to ask you, what's your favorite frozen pizza? My favorite frozen pizza is probably either Red Baron sausage, pepperoni, or possibly freschetta meat lovers or DiGiorno's rising crust pepperoni and sausage. I <laughs> eat a lot of frozen pizza, so that's why this is all so specific because like, I like all of these a lot. Dave, Dave and I are also big frozen pizza fans, and it's amazing how many people actually don't eat frozen pizza. Yeah. We ask this question all the time, and uh, it's amazing how many people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't eat frozen pizza. And a little part of me dies each time somebody gives the answer. So I was just really happy that you actually had like answers and they were so specific. Yeah. You know, I think it's a status symbol. So, you know, once, we, you know, once we get to another level guys, we can stop talking about this, but for now, like <laughs> we'll continue the conversation about what our favorite frozen pizzas are. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jeremiah Watkins, thank you so much for coming on the Nothing Important Podcast. Everybody out there, be sure to check him out on uh, Jeremiah, uh, JeremiahWatkins.tv. I almost said .com, .tv. And uh, do you have any projects coming up? Is there going to be a third season of Roast Battle? We're waiting to hear back currently uh, what the next step is and if we're going to get picked back up, all that stuff. Uh, reach out to me on social media at Jeremiah stand up on all social media and uh, say that you listen to me on the podcast. If you're in LA, I'll give you tickets to a show for free. If you would like. That's awesome. 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 And this, does that apply for me too? Because I might be coming out to LA soon. So, I mean, you're going to hook me up with tickets or what? Absolutely. Whatever you need. All right. You provide the tickets. I'll bring the frozen pizza. All right. <laughs> Dude, this is a friendship that's waiting to happen. <laughs> all right. Right on. Jeremiah Watkins. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me, guys. Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at Not Important PC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. Thanks for being awesome.